I want to speak to us today from John chapter 10 in our series. And if you have your Bibles, and we're going to be in the scripture of John 10 quite a bit, um, but it's really, this morning is about hearing and listening to God. And uh, I want for all of us to understand something that I, my whole life, am bent on trying to listen to God's voice, not just hear, because I will tell you that God is speaking to all of us all the time. He is always speaking. There is nothing wrong with the transmitter, right? There's always something awry with the receiver. And for those of you online, you're watching online, you know, we have a lot of people that watch online because of the whole COVID thing. But if you're online, you're watching because it's being broadcast in some way or connected electronically over Wi-Fi, and you're watching. The broadcast, sometimes there's things wrong with it, but usually it's pretty strong. We can broadcast and we can send it out. And oftentimes we found when people call and they say, I'm not getting it or something, it's something wrong with their device or their connection or something. So God is always speaking. He's always transmitting. The receiving is the hard part. The hearing is the hard part. And God has a plan for us, though, to hear his voice. And, and God designed us to hear his voice, to hear his words of life, not the words of death that are in this you know, world. And, and I want us this morning, because this is important, and I need to we know that we need to really kind of be, get a little discontent enough to say enough is enough. In all of the noise, we need to hear God's voice. I wish I had an example. Oh, wait a second. I got an example. Here's a piano, right? I think we can, uh, is this on? It's on. Yay. How about we play something? on the guitar maybe that'll help a little bit I think the sound is always being communicated God is always speaking in perfect harmony and perfect pitch he is communicating the problem is in this world there's all kinds of noise and every single one of us no matter who we are where we come from is subject to the noise And that is exactly what Jesus is talking about in John 10. So let's get started. John 10, verse number 1, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber. That's the other noise. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out when he has brought out all his own he goes before them and the sheep follow him for they know his voice God is designed for you and I to hear his voice a clear Jesus in this portion portion of what he's saying the scripture here gives a clear image of a preferable future that's what vision is and not aimless in life not wandering but definitely following the direction of the shepherd and in life we can wander around and one of the the thing that I want us to hear this morning is more than my voice but the voice of the Holy Spirit speaking you as he has done for me this week in preparation that there are so many voices out there saying so many things that God desires to speak to us as fathers as grandmothers and grandfathers as students as children 
As aunts and uncles, he wants us to hear his voice as people. He desires for us to hear clearly. The flow of culture is just going all the time, and it simply identifies with whatever people like and whatever we like. But, so vision is important. And as Christians, we have this advantage to, given to us uh, on purpose. We have the joy and hope of the Lord because we have the ability to hear God speak. You and I do, the creator of the universe. And there are, there are things that, that hinder us hearing him, being buried in sin, of course, people that have open wounds in their life where they've experienced someone hurting them and in their family or in their church even, heavy burdens or fear of failure, all of these things can create lots of noise. And God is trying to speak his healing and his hope and his peace. And sometimes we just don't hear what he has to say. Vision is that, that thing that comes when we hear God's voice. And without vision, we, we don't do well. Vision is the drive for the, that young man or woman to finish college or, or to get married. Or vision pushes us, brings us dreams and aspirations and things that God desires for us to do. Ministries, he desires for us to put our hands to the plow and do. So how do you hear God speak? How do you clarify and understand what he is saying? There's some principles here we can derive from the scripture. And the first one I want to speak to is, in order to hear God's voice, we must be available to hear him speaking. We must be available to hear him speaking. How many times is there a difference between hearing and listening? Come on, how many have a teenager? How many are married? <laughs> you know, there's a difference between hearing and listening. Uh, I can say to one of my boys, they're all grown now, but I could say, you know, take out the trash yeah I'll do it well an hour later the trash is still full and it's not they heard what I said but listening meant to take a priority over what I was saying to them in, in what I was saying to them over what they were doing no matter what it was listening is being able to apply the hearing into action and that's important right that we do that, and, and when somebody says that, or people give excuses, or then comes the confrontation, right? I asked you to take out the trash. Well, I was doing it. Well, you know, then it gets a little more difficult, and this is the same way God works with us, right? When we disobey, or we don't hear, or we refuse to listen, and we go through all of these difficulties in life because God is a loving Father, is a, really wanting to guide us and lead us all through life by us being able to hear His voice. And when we don't listen to His voice, or we don't respond, and we don't hear, what happens is we get caught up in all this other stuff, and then He says, wait a minute, wait, wait. I said way back here to do this and this. And we go, well, I was thinking, you know, it's just like the kid taking out the trash. It's just like us as children to a father. And, and I think that sometimes we treat God this way and we say, you know, we might come to church, we could hear God speak to us or we're in our devotions or with other, under one of the other groups in our church or church family and we're praying together. We sense God's presence or we're moved when we're in worship and His power um, to change our life, to begin to listening to the Lord and what He has to say to us. But we go back to our room surrounded in an environment that is antithetical toward hearing God and we do not listen. We hear, but we don't listen. Reminds me of a story about the thief and the parrot. I'm sure you've heard it. The, the burglar comes into the house. It's dark in there, and, and um, he hears a voice in the darkness. Jesus is going to get you. Jesus is going to get you. He goes, who is that? So he turns a, his flashlight around as he's pillaging through stuff, and he sees there's a, there's a parrot cage there. And, and there's a, he lifts off the top, and there's a parrot in there that says, Jesus is going to get you. And he's relieved, right? Because it's just a parrot. It's not a person. And then he goes, oh, I'm so glad. He turns around just in time to continue pillaging, and he sees a giant Rottweiler drooling, growling, and snarling right in front of him. And then he hears the parrot say, sick him, Jesus. <laughs> anyway, I knew you probably heard it before. I just wanted Hearing and listening, come on, give me a little bit of it. I know it's, you know, it's, okay, thank you. If you have to ask for it, it's probably not funny. So um, <laughs> how are you making yourself available to hearing God's voice above all the noise? 
I guess that's the big question today. What kinds of things in your home or your environment that, that detract you from listening to God? Is it the, the television or your phone or your, the computer or, or just any other thing, really? Do you have a dedicated daily time of meditation on God's Word and prayer? Are you engaged in the Word ministries with your Abundant Life family, of which there are many? And, and if you are connected in this way, I want to let you know, praise God for that. We make ourselves more available to hearing God by being in His presence. If we neglect the Word of God, we're going to step out of the will of God. That's just the way it is. If we neglect His Word, we're going to step out of His will, and then we're going to wonder what's going on. And this is, a, this is okay because God created the altar, and He created the opportunity for us to come to Him and hear His voice. Many times over the years, I've known people that sometimes pr avoid being in church or Bible study or something because uh, they, they're out of the will of God. They don't want to hear, right? And, and they wish to continue to hide in their sin, or they avoid praying. They just quit praying, you know. Maybe they even continue their ministry, but they stop praying. They stop seeking God because they know that God is speaking to them and they don't want to hear what he has to say. Friends, I want to, I want to tell you that all the noise in the world created by our own flesh and the work of the enemy, the demonic world, is an enemy to our soul. It's an enemy to revival that God wants to birth in our lives and in our church. Like a like a child confronted with eating the cookies in the cookie jar, and they turn and they say they don't know it with chocolate all over their face. It's the cutest thing in the world, but there's a deception there. I didn't do it. I didn't eat the cookies. And God is calling us out of that. He's calling us to hear His voice. To, we have times of prayer. Prayer on our own is good, but even praying together is, is even better that we pray together. There was prayer here this morning. There's prayer in, in church services. There's a prayer meeting tonight at 6 o'clock. There are times where we congregate, where we get, no, there's not this week. I, I got my weeks wrong. Uh, it's the next Sunday. Uh, but there's prayer during the week. There's prayer groups. There's prayer times. There's different groups that pray together. There's opportunity to pray together. I encourage you to do that. Why do we pray? Because, friends, the God whom we serve and love not only has the ability to, hear this, to meet your need, but he has the integrity to back it up. Our God knows what you need. He has the integrity to, to back it up. We stand tallest when we stand on our knees. Psalm 84, verse 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly? Listening to God's voice, secondly, requires that relationship. So listening is one thing, well, hearing is one thing, but listening is quite another. Listening is where vision flourishes, where God gives instruction. So let's read the scripture again, John 10, 1, Truly, truly, I say, he who does not enter by the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in another way, that man is a thief and a robber, but he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice and calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out his own, all, all his own, he goes before them and the sheep follow him. For they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow. Are you catching this? But they flee from him. For they know the voice of strangers. This is a figure of speech. Now look at what Jesus is doing as he's speaking here. That he used to them... But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus speaking, the Pharisees are listening, and his disciples, and he uses this illustration of the shepherd and the sheep. The significance of the illustration is one of relationship, right? The shepherd has a relationship with the sheep. He feeds them. He talks to the sheep. And, and they listen to him. When Pam and I uh, were in transition from being a youth pastor before coming to Abundant Life Church years ago, we had this, we, we stayed in this place where we were caretakers of kind of a little tiny farm. You know, we had a horse and we had a bunch of sheep. 
And every day, Pam would go out there to feed the sheep, and she would talk to them, right? And she would feed the sheep, and, and they got used to her voice. You know, I show up, they don't even care if I show up. Yeah, I'm just the guy that works all, he comes home, and there I am. And, but when she showed up, they listened to her voice. They knew her well. In fact, some people came by to buy the sheep once, and uh, from the people that owned the property, and we were caretakers of the property. And, and he showed up in his pickup truck with his big sides on it, and he he said, I wanna, I'm buying the sheep, and the, the owner said, okay, make sure they get loaded up. So I went out to the barn and opened the barn door, and they backed up, and we loaded the sheep all except one, the obnoxious one, escaped between the truck tailgate and the barn door. And he goes out, and the property is large. He's out running around the pond, and I'm out there, <sighs> sweat uh, pouring. I am just, and I dive for this sheep. I grab his ankle. He wiggles away. I actually turned and cornered him one time. He had the gall to come at me. Like, Finally, I got him cornered. Actually, I think Pam did it, to be honest. Had him cornered with the pickup truck and the barn right here. And I'm just, I've had it with the sheep. And I literally it just picked him up by the wall and flung him over the top of the truck. He landed inside, and the guy looked at me kind of strange. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I've had enough of the sheep. I wonder if Jesus ever feels like that. Hmm. But she, she, they understood her voice. Scripture says that Jesus was using a figure of speech, right? He was using an illustration, but they didn't understand him. They didn't recognize his voice. So, so being God that he is and patient, he comes at the illustration with a new angle. Look at what he says in verse 7. So again, Jesus telling them again, he said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who come before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now Jesus is getting very plain. He's being very frank. He's speaking clearly there, so there's no confusion. Hey, guys. I'm the only one. I'm the only one, he says. I am the only way to real life and the life eternal. There is no, there is salvation no other way. Look what he says at verse 10. We love this verse here at Abundant Life Church, right? The thief comes only to kill and destroy. I come that they might have life and have it abundantly. That's the name of our church, by the way. It's cool. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. He who is hired, a hired hand and not a shepherd who does not own the sheep sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and flees. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. He flees because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. The father knows me and I know the father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now he's getting pretty plain. He is telling them that he is the good shepherd. He is the son. The father has given him instruction. And I have other sheep that are not of this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the father loves me, because I lay down my life that I might take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down, and I have authority to take it up again. This charge I have received from my father. Now, at this point, they must be angry. At this point, they must be really frustrated. Now, Jesus has told them again, and he has come right out pretty much, and he said that he is God. He actually says, you Pharisees are false shepherds. That has to hurt, right? You're not the real shepherd. You see the wolf coming, and what do you guys do? You hoof it. You run away. You, you, you know, you're chicken. You shepherds are just a bunch of chickens. You know, you should be herding chickens rather than sheep. You're worthless. He comes right out and tells them. And then he says, but I'm not like you. I don't run away. Did you catch what he says? He said, I lead my sheep to safety when the wolf comes. I love my sheep, and they, they, they know that I love them. They're with me. They hear my voice. They hear and they listen. They're saved from being devoured because they have learned to trust my voice to lead them. They have learned to listen to me. In fact, I love my people so much, he says, that I'm willing to die for them. 
I'm willing to lay down my life for my sheep. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the one who will save the people, my people. I am the only one that will lead them and give them hope. Pretty clear, right? He's pretty clear. So John 10 and verse 24, Jesus says it again. So the Jews gathered around him and said, how long will you keep us in suspense? Okay, I've told you once. I've told you twice. And they come and they just say, if you're the Christ, just tell us plainly. In other words, we don't get it. I suppose it could be a little tricky if someone identifies with the sheep and they know that they're sheep and the sheep are referred to as people and Jesus is the shepherd. He is the leader of the sheep. He is the, the high priest. He is the, he is the pastor. He is the leader. He is the, he is the senior dude. He is the one. He is God. And they need clarification still. They're so frustrated they heard him, but they didn't listen. So listening is important. Listening is to hear and respond, to, to hear and to translate that hearing into action, real change. This is the source of vision. And this is really so funny because earlier in the Gospel of John, John listened to him. Remember, John 1, the next day Jesus was coming toward him. Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Andrew listened to him in verse chapter 141. The first one to bring his brother to Simon, Simon to Jesus. And he said, we have found the Messiah. Philip listened to him in John 1, Philip found Nathaniel and said, and we found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets wrote about. And Nathaniel answered him, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Remember? They heard, they listened. The Samaritan woman listened to him, didn't she? We just looked at her a few weeks ago, and, and the woman said, I know that Messiah is coming, who is called the Christ. When he comes, he will tell us all things. Many Samaritans heard him. They listened. They followed him from her witness and testimony. They found out for themselves. The centurion and all of his family listened. We find out earlier, and the scripture goes on, the man born blind, as Pastor Josh preached to us last week, he heard and he listened. Hearing and listening are two different things. I mean, I've been a student a lot. I mean, I'm sure we've all been a student. You go to school, you go to college, and you hear the teacher, you hear the lecture, and sometimes there are some you can just go, I mean, it's like preaching, right? I know because sometimes we fall asleep when we're preaching. Not the preacher necessarily, hopefully not. But, you know, I, I myself have sitting there sometimes in class, and I've glazed over when a professor, I don't know it's really important. You know, it's osmosis, the diffusion of water through a semi-permeable membrane or something important, right? And I'm missing it. I'm hearing, but I'm not listening. I want to ask us, are you listening? Listening means to hear God and respond. For some, we're hearing God speak to us about our marriage, maybe, or there's hearing God speak this morning to us about our addictions. Some are hearing God and how to give instructions for our children or how to really live for Him. So hearing God means turning our hearts and our children toward God. And, 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 and I, you know, on Wednesdays and, and this morning, downstairs, and all the kids, they're doing their thing. This morning, they're, they're in creation, and Justin is teaching them about creation and how God created everything. That is listening to another voice besides the voice that's being taught in the school. The voice that's being taught in culture and school is they evolved from some sort of, pla you know, goo. And they're hearing. What are they hearing? They're hearing, and hopefully, you know what happens when we hear? We respond, and we listen to God. There's, there's some of maybe that have been in this room, that, that are in this room, and we hear God calling us to do something for him, to, to give our life to him, to, to, give a, uh, to serve in ministry. God compels us by his great love. He, he urges us out of, to come out of the darkness into the light. We hear God speaking all the time. He's often speaking, and, and sometimes we refuse to listen. God calls and he calls and he speaks to us, but sometimes what do we do? We don't pay attention. 
We have skills and abilities and talents. And God says, hey, I want you to use those. I want you to be in action. I want you to do what God's called you to do. And we sit about on the sideline and we watch everyone else play. We will hear God speak when we admit our weaknesses as well. The ability to hear the shepherd begins by recognizing that we are sheep. A sheep is really quite pathetic, really. How many have ever worked with sheep? Anybody here work with sheep? I have a couple that have worked with sheep. Um, sheep are pretty interesting. I know that lambs are so cute. Has anybody seen a lamb? How many have seen that little, uh, years ago there was a thing going around on social media, the little lambs, goats with pajamas on, hopping around. Have you seen that? No? They're so cute, right? I mean, they're, they're just adorable. When they get bigger, they're not so adorable. They're just, you know, kind of obnoxious. They come and they eat, and they, that's about it, right? That's all that they do. But sheep are, are something sort of dumb in a way. And, and I include myself in the sheep category. So there's no one up here saying that you're dumb. We're just sheep, right? Can we all make this agreement in comparison to God? We really are not all that bright. Uh, come on now. Can we, can we just acknowledge that? This is a Pentecostal church. You can say amen. It's okay. All right, all right. I know because of COVID we're half, you know. But you can still say it, all right? But sheep will literally, if attacked, you know, you've seen the water buffalo on, right? And the lions come after the water buffalo, and they all gang up on the water buffalo, and the water buffalo fights back. I mean, he might catch one with one of his horns and fling it. I've seen him fling it through the air. He might do what he can. Ultimately, most of the time, he succumbs to the lions. And there's nothing that the water buffalo can do. He's still trying. But a sheep, however, if a wolf even comes and knocks it down, he'll just lay there and let himself get eaten. Just not very smart. Uh, occasionally, I've seen some fight back. But when a sheep... Is it, when it, they know that they've lost, they just lay down. Shearing, how many have ever sheared a sheep? Nobody can hear a sheared a sheep before. That is really amazing. Shearing a sheep is quite an adventure, but once you start, is from my experience, which is very little actually. I don't have sheared sheep much, a couple times, but they are actually quite cooperative. I was very surprised. I thought this thing would be bucking and kicking and moving and scrambling to get out of that. But a sheep is just kind of docile and will let, and they'll lay down and let the wolf eat it. They'll, the sheep was just, I mean, when Jesus uses the illustration of sheep, are you catching? I, are, are we really getting what he's talking about? I mean, God's telling us, you're not that bright. You give yourself too much credit. And you're saying, wait a minute. I, 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 Pastor, what are you saying this morning, that I'm dumb? I'm included in the dumb thing, okay? We're a sheep. But the good news is that the shepherd is not dumb. The shepherd guides the sheep. And the fact of the matter is, when Jesus says, I am the good shepherd, he says, you can't look anywhere else. You don't have anywhere else to look. You don't have any other hope, any other thing you gravitate toward, any other thing in this world that culture has to offer. When you drink out of that toilet, you are not getting refreshed by what I have to give. He is saying, I am the good shepherd. The point of it is that sheep need a shepherd. And sheep will always find one. They'll follow themselves. They'll follow others. They'll, they'll gravitate towards strength. The demonic... In this world, it are putting out snares everywhere, and, and yet many go through this life without a shepherd. And, and what happens in the church is that the sheep, and all, we all gather around the shepherd once a week. We come, to, we come and we gather once a week, and, and all the rest of the week we wander out through the pasture, subject to all the wilds, the snakes, and the wolves, and all the things that are out there, and we're being chased around, and all week you're being harassed. We're being harassed all week, and we come back once a week. Friends, this should not be. I hope and pray that you as a sheep are following the shepherd on Monday like you do Sunday. Let's not come to church and lift our hands and, 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 and raise our voices in worship and sing holy, holy, holy and feel and sense His Spirit all the wonderful just on Sunday. 
Let's walk that walk because, friends, i got to tell you, you need it every day. Jesus is talking about the relationship with the sheep. He is saying, the sheep hear my voice because they're used to being around me. They're used to hearing what I have to say. Isaiah 53 puts it well. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Right? In verse 6, Isaiah 53, 6. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him, Jesus, the iniquity, the responsibility on the shepherd for all of us. Jesus has received that on himself. And let me ask you, have you humbled yourself in prayer? Do you acknowledge to God that you need a shepherd? Do you admit that you're a sheep? If you do, you will hear and you and I will be able to listen to God's voice. We genuinely need to get fed enough to recognize our need for the shepherd. The final thing here, I'm almost, well, closing number one. We'll hear God when we develop a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Relationship with Holy Spirit is paramount in our lives. And there's a growing stigmatism and stigma, stigmatism, stigma, and Christian, that would be a totally different thing, right? <laughs> stigma in relationship to the Holy Spirit where the Holy Trinity has become Father, Son, and Holy Bible in, in a lot of circles. And this is just not the way that Scripture relates to us. The work of the Holy Spirit is for our lives. He is the work or the, the ways of God in that we are available to hear his voice. Scripture is so important that we hear what God is, what God is speaking. And, and if we, we don't have to be someone special, we don't have to be a super evangelist, we don't have to be the super pastor guy on TV to hear God speak. And I want to tell us how to do that. I want to show us a few ways. Number one, prioritize waiting on God. The psalmist said every time, early, Lord, in the morning will I seek you. I will come and I will find you. And ask God to speak to you. Ask God to relate to, meditate on his word. Take time to prioritize that. In your life. And I know, friends, some of you are saying, Pastor, that's so elementary. That's so basic. Well, remember our Reignite 2021 is the first thing. Experiencing God is getting back to that place where we are daily giving time to wait on the Lord. Meditate on his word. Secondly, and this is really important, walk in the spirit as we obeying him by the initial promptings of the Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit prompts us. He, he tells us things. And when we sense those things that are confirmed by His Word, we follow them. That's what Paul writes in Galatians 5.25. If we live by the Spirit, let us also walk by the Spirit. Are you able to hear and sense the promptings of God's Holy Spirit in your life? How do we do that? I think there are several ways some principles of God's word that you meditate on, that you think about, where God reveals something to you. For example, I was meditating on Ephesians 5.15. Be careful how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise. There's a lot there, right? How do I walk as someone who is wise in this world when there's so much to do in this life? And, and, and he, he goes on and not as, unwise, not as unwise, but as wise, making most of every opportunity. And I began to say, Lord, have I taken advantage of the opportunities you have given me always to share with somebody the gospel? I mean, the, the gal that cuts my hair, the, the woman that serves me pancakes twice a week, am I being, God, your hand extended in those very practical ways? Am I letting, am I being somebody who's an encourager of people. And we were in prayer meeting not that long ago, and, and as we were praying, uh, one of the people in the prayer meeting sensed that God was saying something specific. And as they let out in prayer, we all began to agree. 
because the Holy Spirit's presence, earlier when we were in worship time, we were experiencing God's presence in this room, and we were responding to his voice as we worshiped him. And it's not just in the concert or the, or the big meeting. It's in those quiet moments. How do we know God's voice? Just like the sheep know the shepherds. It lines up with his word. God is speaking. He wants to speak to you, friends. He wants to speak to us in this time, in this generation right now where things are so chaotic sometimes and so dark and so weird. And, and here's how it really works, the revelation part, the part where people clamor to find out the secret formula for hearing God's voice, the secret potion, the ones that the thing that people write books about. Here it is. Are you ready? Here it is. We will hear the voice of the shepherd if we are in the presence of the shepherd. It's so complicated, I know. It's not complicated, but it can be hard to do because there's so much noise. There's so much chaos. There's so many things being preached at us about what is the new morality based on the political climate of our culture and our day. We're being preached at and told all kinds of things that are really co quite contrary to the ideals of what God has for us in this, in this generation, in this time that we're living in. God is saying, hey, I, I don't want you to be caught up with all the noise. You know, TikTok is going to come and it'll be there and it's going to go. We thought Facebook would be gone. It's going to take it a little longer, but one day it'll be gone too. All of the things in this world, they're just, gonna, they're just part of our DNA now, and it's just so much noise. It's, it's so much chaos. It's so much uh, ridicule of God, and there's so many things. And as the Bible says, as the plethora of information increases in the world, the love of many will grow cold. Because there's so much information, I can open my phone. And, and the, the information learning curve in 1985 was, was two years in a doubling curve. And now it's, it'll be 24 hours, they say, by the end of by 2030. That's incredible. All because we, we now know all this stuff. And we, not that the information is true, but we have more of it at our fingertips. We can do comparative religious ideas. We, we look for our church online. We, we do all these kind of things. And we, well, what do we do? We got so much information. There's so much noise. I bet you if you were to really evaluate how much of the stuff that we listen to or, or we look at or is there in front of us all the time, we would be dismayed in comparison to how much time we're giving to meditating with the Lord. There's a lot of noise, friends. Are you hearing me? I hope and pray that you do. That I'm not immune to this. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pointing any fingers. I'm on the same boat as we all are. But God is wanting to speak. And I look around our country and I'm so blessed by it. Have, have you guys seen that Florida revivalist breaking out on the beach? All those young people crying out for God? It's like God is doing something, and, and he, he is always speaking. It's not that they, he wasn't speaking in Florida before. It's not that he wasn't speaking in Argentina with the great revival breakouts or anywhere around the world that's happened or here in America and Canada that's happened from time to time or the great awakenings throughout the year. There's nothing wrong with what God is speaking. It's that we're not listening. In this room, there are prophets sitting in these chairs. There are pastors and teachers sitting in these chairs. There are workers of miracles and showers of mercy and servants and administrators and organizers. There are giftings that God has for his people, but there's so much noise. We know the noise so much better than we know the voice of God. We run to the latest Marvel movie because it's got the greatest and next thing of the storyline. It's exciting and it's cool. And I'm not saying there's anything necessarily terrible about it, but it still adds to the noise. It's different philosophies, ideologies. It's, it's not about Jesus and God and the goodness of his power and grace. It's fantasy. We become so enamored with fantasy that there's no touch of reality with being in God's presence. Let me tell you, this is the core curse of our generation. It's the curse of our day. All of the noise and the shepherd is saying, I am talking, I'm calling to you. Here's the food. I've got something for you to eat. Here's my protection. Come sit with me. Come rest with me. And all we want to do all week is run around with all the noise. 
I tell you, God is calling for his church and he wants to raise up more leaders among our elders and make them prayer warriors, praying and seeking God for revival. He wants to raise up the young people to be able to, every time there's been a great awakening, the young people have been at the forefront of what God was doing. And all that we can hear is all the noise. Noise here, noise there. We love the noise. We don't want to listen to God's word. We don't have any interest in walking and obeying and falling into the, the prayer life or the devotional life or coming into the presence of God with fellow believers. We reject the fellowship with believers because we're just better on our own all week. We just want to be out with all the noise. We want to sit down after we get home from work rather than go to prayer meeting and turn on the cable television and just let it wash over us. Because we're so weary and we're so tired and we're, we're out of shape and we're overweight. All the things that God talks about in his word, we're doing just the opposite. We've added all kinds of things to the static in our culture. The church has its own static and is seeing all kinds of craziness these days. Friends, I hope you hear God's heart today and not just a screaming preacher. You may have been in church for years. You've heard this said a lot. Perhaps when we hear it, we just want to ignore it. You got to do this. You got to make more money. You got to have this. You got to go there. You got to, and God is saying, wait, wait, wait. I'm talking. I'm speaking. He says the words. He is, he's done all he can do to say them. When he died on the cross and said it is finished and ascended to heaven and sent his Holy Spirit, he's saying a lot. He said all he's going to say. He's done all he's going to do for that. He's already speaking. I contend today that we're not hearing. If you have a desire, but you have a frustration because you can't hear, I want to relate to you that the lover of your soul is speaking to you. The lover of your soul. Listen. Listen you'll hear the words of life. The benevolent Heavenly Father is speaking. Maybe we can't hear His words. We need to stop to listen. He speaks words of love, words of peace and hope, but sometimes we can't hear them. The healer of your family, the healer of your broken heart is speaking. But maybe you can't hear Him. The deliverer of your addiction is speaking. He is saying, be free. He is saying, I have the power to satisfy the cravings in your life. Psalm 46.10 says, to be still and know that I am God. And we are so full of noise. It's impossible to be still for him. There's a great disturbance. There's a great power of noise, chaos. And God is saying, I am your healer. I am the lover of your soul. I am the one who can give you peace. He is speaking to you today. He's saying, I have hope for your wayward son. He's saying, I have healing for your body. He is saying, I have provision in the middle of your chaos. He is saying, I have peace no matter what's going on. These are his words. The word of God says them over and over again. There's nothing wrong with the broadcaster. It's in perfect tune. Lord, help us to hear can we pray together about this? I know that God wants to speak and he is speaking in your life today in my life and, and I want to respond to him. So let's stand together for this moment. Pam, would you come and, and Jennifer, whoever else is. Jesus, I want to thank you, Lord, for in this moment, this morning, I bring, I believe you're bringing to us individually in this room, students and mothers and fathers and parents, grandparents, from the youngest among us to those who are our elders, we 
we are here, Lord, and we know that you are speaking. And for each person's life, I pray that your word, the power of your word, would pierce the noise. Pierce the noise. Right now, Lord, we want to be still and know that you are God. Jesus, can we just wait on him for a moment while they just play? What is going on in your life, friend? Where is the chaos? And the peace right now of God that wants to speak into your life. Pam and I raised four boys, born between 1995 and 2000. (laughs) One right after the other. And sometimes our house, and even today, because of all the friends, is chaos, right? Kids are coming over. They're in the studio. They're playing music. They're, they're running here and there. And when they're younger, it's hard too, because they're looking everywhere to get and have fun and get into trouble. And sometimes we just have to hold them. And sometimes, oftentimes, they come to the end of their fun and the, they don't have anything to do. And they come and they just sit on your lap and rest in your arms. Can we be that way with the Lord this morning? Can we come to Him and say, Lord, I'm tired of all my chaos. Lord, I'm tired of all my entertainment. Come on, that's a hard one to lay down. Lord, I'm tired of my entertainment. I. I, right now, I want to push it aside. I'm not worried about the next character in this or the next riff with that or the next music or the next song coming out of this guy or that woman. Right now, Lord, I just, I set it all aside. The hectic ways of my job, Lord, I want to lay it down. I, I just want to set it aside, Lord. The chaos that's there, the pressures of having to meet a metric in my workplace. God, it's so stressful. Friends, can you just give that to the Lord? Can you just, Lord, I, I, I want to be still. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Can you sense him speaking to you today? Let his peace rest in you, friends. Let his great joy of His salvation be your strength. The pressure to keep up with the Joneses, the the performance required. Lord Jesus, we want to rest right now. Holy Spirit, come. Thank you for watching Abundant Life Church. If you found this teaching helpful, please subscribe to our page and share us with a friend. Also, please consider giving at nwlife.org.